Hello again. Welcome to week, uh, what is it, 11 of our Pokemon Battle League. This is uh, Coach Ian of the Mahogany Town Muse, and this week I battle Coach Amber of the Lavender Town Lily Pups. Um, it's a pretty good battle. I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm not going to say anything more. You're about to watch it. So um, this week I tried a neat little strategy uh, on a few of my Pokemon uh, because I was pretty annoyed that I couldn't fit in my There Is No God Quillfish. So to compensate I had a little fun with Buddy the Azelf, what's your favorite color? Um, I decided to lead with him, uh, he's really fast and I wanted to set up Stealth Rocks early and thankfully uh, I am able to as she sends out her No Boy Allowed, the uh, Toxapex here. So I do set up the Stealth Rocks and she toxics me, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, I can't really take hits from anybody anyway, so I'd rather he, he be toxic because I don't really need the HP. But uh, after that I decided to go for a Psychic, see if she's going to switch out, and she actually doesn't, and goes for a Recover. Um, I do way more than half, I almost actually get a one hit KO, so... I know I can do another Psychic, but I am assuming that she's going to switch out here, so I actually start to go for my premier strategy here, uh, and I go for the uh, Future Sight on the Switch. Uh, the strategy here was I know that I know a lot about Pokemon, and before this battle I could not have told you how many turns have to go by before a Future Sight hits. Um, so knowing that, I was hoping that Amber wouldn't either and that in the middle of the battle she wouldn't have the time to look up how long it does take or how much damage it would do and uh, hopefully that would mean that she keeps in maybe a wall that uh, wouldn't be able to take effectively two attacks in one turn. So I do set it up and uh, the next turn I go for the U-turn as she brings in her stack attack out of the Jenga here. Uh, I do switch into my K. Rula dial because I know I can take pretty much anything especially after the Intimidate drop. Um, I basically came in here to try and earthquake this thing, um, but assuming it's going to switch, I am just going to go straight for a knockoff, and uh, if she did stay in, I'd get some nice damage and uh, get rid of its item anyway. So she switches into number 726 here, the uh, Sail Valley, and it doesn't do a lot of damage with my knockoff, but thankfully this is the turn that my future site lands, and exactly like, like I was hoping. Um, it can't come in on the knockoff switch and take the future sight and be outsped to take another knockoff. So that's really nice. Uh, Buddy the A's Elf, what's your favorite color? Uh, coming in clutch here, helping to take down the Sil Valley. Uh, so after that, she switches into Braviary here. Uh, I know I can't take a, what you call it, superpower, and I'm thinking it's going to bulk up, but um, even if it does go for an attack, Zapdos here can take it. And she does go for the Brave Bird, which actually does a fuckload way more damage than I thought it would. Um, but it is still a little less than half, especially after my leftovers. And um, unfortunately, I don't get the static off the contact, but that's fine. Don't really need it. I can take it out anyway. Um, so I believe here I do go for a Thunder Wave, just seeing... No, 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 no. I do assume that she is going to switch into the Volt Absorb uh, uh, Jolteon here. So I do go for the Hidden Power. Uh, Hidden Power Ice, which would have done a lot to Braviary anyway. It wouldn't have been a KO, but I might have gotten the KO with a, a recoil from Brave Bird anyway. So Zap um, Jolteon does take this, and I switch out Zapdos into K. Ruladial the Crocodile here, hoping that she would go for an electric attack. Um, I knew if she did go for Hidden Power Ice or Grass, I could take it, and unfortunately she does. And uh, it brings me down to about a third of my HP. But I am Choice Scarfed here, and I think she knows that, so she is going to switch out into her uh, head hands, the Hydreigon here. I do go for the Earthquake, just trying to play it safe. I really don't want to f uh, face this Jolteon, because it is something that's stopping my little squishy Manaphy from setting up. So I'm just going to go for the safe Earthquake, and it's not going to affect her Levitate. So in return, I'm going to switch out into Justice Goat, my... Uh, Cobalion here, hoping that she was going to go for a Dark Pulse, so I could quad, uh, quad resist it and get the plus one off my ability, but she ended up, uh, ended up going um, Outrage anyway, which I resist, and I can take two of those and I KO with a close combat. Um, if I didn't have my Cobalion here um, planned exactly the way I did, I think it would have been very taken off guard by the physical Hydreigon. Um, 
I might not have had an answer for it because I don't think I had uh, any physical walls here. It's just that Cobalion's so naturally defensive. Uh, but in return, she does bring out the Toxapex, and I go for a Volt Switch, get some super effective damage, and switch out into Fitty Scent here. Uh, I can't be toxic, and if I'm Scald Burned, like, who cares, whatever. Um, so I do take the Scald, does like 10 damage or something. Uh, yeah, like 14 damage. Um, and she does switch out the Toxapex, because uh, she knows I can hit it neutrally at least with a Giga Drain or something, but I do just go for a Sleep Powder assuming she is going to switch out, and luckily she does switch out into the Dennis uh, Braviary again. Uh, so Braviary luckily doesn't wake up on this turn, which was a possibility and I would have been super pissed about it, um, but I do end up going for the Sludge Bomb, which is going to take out Mr. Dennis here. Um, so that's one threat taken out. It's another thing that might have been able to take down a little squishy. Um, on the setup turn, so that's always good to go. Uh, so she brings out Jenga here, and I actually have Hidden Power Ground, not specifically for this thing, but it came in handy. And I didn't expect it to one hit KO, but the uh, after the battle I checked it, and apparently it does like 120% if it's not spe uh, especially defensive, so that was very surprising, but uh, welcome to see. Uh, she does bring out the Jolteon here again, and I know I can take a Hidden Power Ice at least once. I have all my extra EVs and HP, and my special defense is pretty good. So I'm going to go for the Giga Drain, hoping that it would KO, but I think Amber has some investment in defenses here, because I think that was supposed to do about 75%. Uh, but I do get some HP back, and I take some Life Orb damage, and I'm just going to switch into Justice Coat here again. Uh, knowing that I can even take a Thunderbolt, I think twice, um, but she does go for the Hidden Power Ice again, and I can take that all day. And she goes for the Thunderbolt, and that does bring me down to uh, 17 HP. And unfortunately, I do get paralyzed, but fortunately, I am not fully paralyzed on a turn. So I am able to get the close combat off, and that takes out the Spiky Boy Jolteon. Uh, so the Paralyze actually does suck. Um, it means I can't uh, do very much, and it probably means that I will get fully paralyzed at some point. Um, so I don't want to keep Kabalion in here. I can't set up anything because, uh, yeah, I have like 17 HP. So I'm going to switch out into Roserade here, take another Scald. Um, does about the same as it did last time. And um, I can just sit here and... Uh, try to put this thing to sleep because my final strategy here is actually to legitimately pad my stats with Manaphy. Um, so unfortunately I do miss the Sleep Powder and uh, Amber goes for the Recover for like 10 HP expecting me to hit her with an attack. Um, but the next turn I just go for the Sleep Powder again and I put this No Boy Allowed to sleep and um, that's just going to let me freely switch out into my Manaphy here to set up and take it down. I'm not totally sure if Roserade could have taken it out with like a hidden power ground or maybe just a bunch of uh, Giga Drains. Well, I know it could have with a bunch of Giga Drains, but I don't want to give her the satisfaction of all those tanked hits. So I am just going to come into Manaphy here, set up a Tail Glow, and go for a Psychic, which fortunately does KO because I think she's more physically invested this week than especially. Um, so yeah, I had a few weird sets here. Um, Zapdos didn't even come out today, so that was kind of unfortunate. I was hoping to bring that guy out. And uh, Manaphy didn't really get to sweep, but um, hopefully the extra one will make up for that fact um, and not having to take any hits or, you know, uh, faint like he did last week. So yeah, it was a really good battle. Uh, it was 6-0, and um, this is one of those weird battles where it seems um, not to be that close, but it actually was. Uh, Cabalion was at like 15 HP or something, Roserade was at less than 25%, uh, Azelf was toxic, uh, <laughs> yeah, Cabalion was paralyzed too. Um, but yeah, it was a really good game. Um, I know this is one of the weird ones that um, makes it so that Nick, Amber, and uh, Brendan are all tied for a playoff spot, and it'll come down to KOs and feints, I think, um, as long as they all lose out on this uh, same round. But uh, it's going to be super interesting. I am still bamboozled by how the other division is going. And uh, we've got one more week after this. So tune in and uh, we'll be right into our playoffs. Yeah, see you then.